How you're feeling, how you're doing, how mentally healthy you are has an impact on every action that you take. Whether it's work, relationships, relaxation, how your mind is feeling will have an outcome on it. Even if it really seems like it ought not to. Stuff like doing math or nailing a piece of wood together. Your mood affects that too. Hmm. So, Slime Boss is silent, always a challenge. Always a challenge. Got a relatively mundane set of starting options here. Not too mundane, but relatively mundane. Smells like a boss swap morning, says Matty G. Might be. Fourth time in a row Slime Boss? I think we had a, a non-Slime Boss that we lost, and then got Slime Boss in one. Like the four rest sites are out. There's actually a couple that we can take that hit four rest sites. Including going for the Burning Elite early, although I think we're unlikely to want to do that. I'm considering we're almost forced, this potentially, through a shop here. This shop. If we go anywhere in the middle, we have to visit this shop. Which makes me consider uh, 100 gold as a starting option, pretty strongly. Missy Well says, Slime Boss is hard for Silent specifically? Yes, I think so. There's a couple reasons for that. One, Silent has the lowest damage output of all the characters with her starting deck, as well as the largest size starting deck, which means additional added cards are of less impact. Slime Boss is very much a fight that checks your damage, specifically how much damage can you do in three turns. You need to do 75 or more by turn three in order to prevent the Slime Crush attack from turning you into a fine schmear on the ground of the Exordium. And Silent tends to have a, a, a lot of difficulty with that. Two, when the Slime Boss splits in two, and when those constituent large slimes split into their smaller slime versions, both times debuffs on the slime creatures are reset. So poison doesn't carry over when a slime splits in two, neither does weakness, and both of these penalize Silent as well. There are definitely a few things Silent can do to answer Slime Boss well, but if you don't get presented with any of the easy answers, the boss matchup can be very unfavorable indeed. So I'm thinking a path something like this. That's too many events. Hmm. Go to that shop and then, depending on whether we want more combats or more events, we'll figure it out from here. One of these two. But we get four rest sites and two elites in Act 1. Hopefully we can pick up uh, some early damage and then upgrade it at that first fire. Might be too many events. We could opt into the shop here um, if we feel like we're not ready for the first elite. But that would end up wasting this shop. And indeed, Specimen doesn't work with uh, Slime Splitting either. So not, not even that relic will help you there. Boss Swap could make that early elite a lot more challenging. Not necessarily easier. I'm going to take the money here. I think we're just fine with that. I'm quite content with this path overall. Greetings, Jawworm. Don't think that I need to strike two times on this turn, but there's maybe an argument for strike, strike, survivor as the line. Otherwise, we're maybe not dealing enough damage to Jawworm. Yeah, that certainly feels like the case. Here we want to defend. More Jawworm buffs, the more difficult a time Silent ends up having. Oh boy. It's one of those draw orders, I understand. Well, ouch. Please stop drawing this exact hand on the buff turns. Hello? Well, this is definitely evidence that I should have played two strikes on turn one. Dang. Big punish there. And again, this exact hand on a buff turn. Nightmarish. Somebody was asking me yesterday, have Baylor, have you ever died on floor one? Hmm. 
And the answer is still no, but man, did we just come close. What on earth just happened? It was like a 50 damage jawworm? What? What the hell? <laughs> Why? That was, that was incredible. I've never seen a draw order like that against Jawworm with Silent. Never. Does the plan change now? I, I think I might choose to upgrade a card now, based on how that went, because I need Blade Dance Plus for the next fight. That said, uh, I think we might be going to the shop. Depends on what, what's in this event room. I'm hoping we get a heal of some kind, or a waffle. Those are my, my current plans. So yeah, that was that was a lesson in not blocking too much against Jawworm, primarily. What about Neutralize Plus? Neutralize Plus is not bad, but it's not as good as Blade Dance Plus. We just want more... The four additional damage from one more Shiv is going to be a lot better. Spooky. That Blade Dance Plus helped quite a bit there. Okay, we get a potion, although I wouldn't call it a particularly good one. We're offered Slice versus Poison Stab. Definitely want to take one of these damage options. I'm actually not sure which one. A little bit disincentivized to take Poison Stab, given that we're fighting Slime Boss. I think I'd much prefer the Slice, actually. And despite, I trust me when I say it's very tempting to just kind of mulligan the whole run there, right? But this is very much still a position we can win from, so there's no need to give up yet. Although I've, I think I've thoroughly learned my lesson about uh, Jawworm turn one. I really ought to follow my own advice. If the defend isn't blocking for all five points of damage, play a strike instead. All right, we'll pick a slice here. Please heal me to full. I could deliberately take a combat to get more ready and then deliberately go to the shop. Hmm. I'm going to take the events. Lose 11 health. Hmm. Well, this has worsened things. The mess is not worth it. All right, I don't think another event is going to necessarily help my odds. We'll go to the shop now. We need... Yaha! All right, we're fine. Easy. Let's upgrade this slice, because we do need more damage. We're a bit behind on the curve for an elite fight. However, we're in a completely fine position. Actually, maybe the neutralize upgrade. Although, we need to be able to kill Legavulin. Slice Plus is going to be required for that, yeah. We don't beat Legavulin without this. We could very much still lose. Suppose I could do this now. Miss out on a fire. But we get more money for this first shop. We get to prepare more for the Elite. Nah. Death be where I be, so be it. Bit of an unfortunate draw order, but I think we can win this fight. Oh yeah, this is not bad. Awaken! Alright, this is also a fight where we should not be shorting ourselves strikes. I'm going to be aggressively aggressively playing strikes because if we get debuffed with negative strength our shivs are going to do almost no damage so i'll even play three strikes here knowing that this won't go well if i don't three 
Likewise, I should play both of these. So next turn, this does eight plus seven plus four plus four. How much is that? That's 23 guaranteed next turn. With minus two strength, I should be able to do one damage. So I think I can play one more defend here. Yeah, there's the one damage. Okay, we lost half our health to get Aguria, allowing us to gain strength at rest sites up to three times. I've got a Blade Dance and a Slice Plus, and now a Fear Potion. This is going to be a pretty strong silent run. And I'm also happy to see a well-laid plans to let us retain cards. Would I take a Wrist Blade based off this start? Uh, I'd be pretty tempted. I'd be pretty tempted. We're going to have our own Wrist Blade very shortly, though, by simply lifting three times. Easy. Give me a Vajra, please. Yeah, this run has been quite a roller coaster. Can I get some big money? Oh, that's not big money, but it is an amazing relic for Silent. Start of each combat, discard any number of cards, and then draw that many again. Deal. So I can take an event or combat for this shop. We're unfortunately under the threshold for actually doing much with the money. Even if we do high roll, we'd have 69 at most. So I think I'll take another event here. We'll go for this combat, probably. Oh, gosh. Well, that's ridiculous. But accuracy is actually not bad. I will be taking more shivs if I see them. I don't know why I don't continue to expect the RNG in this run to be absurd. But yeah, additional power to shivs I think is good enough with a sh with one blade dance plus. I'll take it. Quite frankly, what was in this shop? Yeah, I took made the right choice. All right, combat and then it should be an easy pool fight still, right? Yeah, it's just the cultists. Get out of here, cultists. Did Max roll the money and a power potion? Set up distraction pouncing flask. Heck no, we're leaning physical attacks here with this Gurya. Torok Fremen says, if you don't see a shop, you don't remove the relics from the pool, right? Wrong. As long as you, once you enter the, the shop node, the contents of the shop are generated. So you may as well look. Because they'll be removed either way. Set up for our slice. No. All right, elite number two. This time we've got Gambling Chip and two points of strength. This should be pretty fun, actually. Might use the Power Potion here. We'll see. Well laid plans, Accuracy, Survivor. Yeah, I will use the Power Potion here. Thousand Cuts sounds great. Keep one defend, please. Don't think I can kill both of them. Can I? Truck's gonna be nine apiece. Shiv's deal... Ten? So Blade Dance Plus just outright kills one. So the question is, can Strike Strike Slice kill the other one? That'd be... Nine plus... Nine plus... Twelve. Thirty. So with neutralize, the answer is actually yes. Okay, I'll take a slight a strike. Bottom card was the slice, unfortunately. 
Fair enough. Oh, but I get to shiv the front one, actually, so I think we might have a kill here. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah, that Thousand Cuts was a power potion. It's not a real card in this deck. But the Juzu Bracelet is real. We no longer encounter combats in question mark rooms. That's not necessarily a good thing. But what I think is a good thing is Endless Agony. Zero cost, deal four damage. When we draw the card, add a copy. It's going to be zero cost, deal 14 damage, thanks to three strength from Gurya. That's going to help us out a lot in Act 2. Also very good with the gambling chip, because I can discard both copies if I draw it on turn 1 for extra cards. And then both copies will be duplicated when I draw back into them. So there's an extra bonus interaction there. Not at all worried about Slime Boss here with 24 hit points. Yeah, there we go. Let's discard both Endless Agonies. So I have two cards in hand. I'm gambling six away. I get to draw up to eight cards here. How cool is that? Exactly 100. So we want to get you as close to 75 as possible next turn, and then below that on the following turn. To strike Slice we'll have to do. Attacking again would split Slime Boss in two here. We'd rather draw a new hand than do that. I don't currently feel the need for the Fear Potion. Hmm. It's not ideal, but is still fine. Might have wanted to actually hold on to the Blade Dance rather than playing it on turn one. But I think this will work out. We've got two Endless Agonies coming up. Blade Dance will do enormous damage. We mostly just want to avoid becoming weakened here. So I'll keep this potion for phase two. Get rid of one of these. Keep the survivor. And yeah, this looks pretty acceptable. Twenty-eight. This does. These are 11 each. So we can actually outright kill the gray one and mostly block this. That sounds actually better than killing the green one. Now the question is, Fear Potion or no? I don't think so. Do 25. We're actually going to split it now, even with this damage, right? Okay, which is fine. I'm a little worried about two slimes next turn, but with three defends, I think we'll be okay. We're also actually with very few slimes left in the deck now. So the concern from those is limited as well. When in doubt, hit the one that's debuffing you this turn, as it's more likely to be attacking you next turn. With unacceptable parameters. Alright, I think we get to keep this potion for Act 2. Slime boss... Defeated. GG! Grand finale. Interesting. Probably not necessarily something we want. Tools of the trade could be pretty good. Just draw one, discard one per turn. Helping us cycle through the deck a little bit more. Helping us find our more powerful stuff more easily. Yeah, and to think the Jawworm almost took us down. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Jawworm is the deadliest enemy in the Spire. This run isn't proof of that. I don't know what is. Hey, welcome back, Zenith. And Ravaru, how did thanks for nine months? How did the Ironclad compliment the Watcher? He told her she looked divine. We do have well-laid plans and a gambling chip, which actually can make the finale surprisingly playable. 
Although with the Gurya and the accuracy, it seems a bit odd to get our uh, damage that way when we can just add another Blade Dance. I do like this tool as the trade quite a bit. Let's add that. And that also would have enabled Hovering Kite to be pretty good. Instead, we're offered Calling Bell, a unique curse and three relics right away. Philosopher's Stone for additional strength on enemies, but additional energy on us. Or Black Star for extra relics off elites. Hmm. I think we could make the Black Star work pretty well. Though I'm tempted to go the Calling Bell to get the relics immediately. Definitely a situation where I'm I'm strongly considering Calling Bell over Black Star. Both are very similar in their premise. Both give you bonus relics. The Black Star would be more relics than the Calling Bell by the end of the run. But the Calling Bell gives us relics right away, an immediate boost of power. Um, and we do have a Tools to Trade mine, so that curse isn't as bad as you might think. Yeah, I actually am going to take it right, right now. Give me the relics immediately, please. Relics now are better than relics later, as you get more floors to take advantage of them. The relics we get, pretty spicy. Potion belt for more potions. Courier, letting the merchant restock and giving us a discount. And one of the greatest, fossilized helix, preventing the first time per combat that we would take any amount of damage. That's pretty good. Now, well, two of those don't actually have an impact right now, although I think the potion belt will quickly become useful. see. Any upgrades that we feel are essential. Tools to trade upgrade would be really, really nice. Currently, we're on three energy per turn, which means I don't necessarily have the ability to afford to play the tools. Our basic strikes and defends are really also not cutting it anymore. Are we going to be able to tolerate elites? Maybe not too many of them. Thinking we perhaps want to do something like... This. Actually, let's avoid that. Early shop. These events. Two easy pool fights. Maybe, actually, maybe we do want another combat, because we have many empty potion slots. So taking many fights. With gambling chip, we're probably in, in the clear, actually. Okay, so we will go three combats. Avoid the burning elite here. Two rest sites, then two elites in a shop. For the second half of the act. We could try to go three elites going this way, but I'm a little worried that, that we might not be able to actually survive that. We could even go four combats if we felt capable here. It's front-loading our combats a bit much, but it would stock me up on potions for the elites. Not too worried about birds with blade dance and gambling chip. Uh, being able to just block the avocados hit on turn one is going to be so helpful for that fight. What needs upgrading? I think tools to trade and well-laid plans are two of the most important upgrades. Accuracy would be a worthy upgrade, especially if we can get our hands on another blade dance. Uh, other than that, we'd mostly like to remove cards now or add some new ones. So yeah, actually, I think taking more combats is a good idea. We should be able to eat, beat those fights pretty easily here in a myriad of different ways. Kind of hoping that we can kill on this turn. Simply drawing uh, Blade Dance would suffice. We did not draw Blade Dance, which means we cannot kill, right? We could do 14 plus 18. Yeah, we can't kill it, so I'll have to block. Tragedy has struck. Uh, retain the strike. Bummer. A little bit behind the power curve there. There's our second blade dance. 
As much as the footwork would be nice, it's not as nice as Blade Dance number two. There's that parasite. Stinky, stinky parasite. Well, guess what, fool? I'm immune to your nonsense. Easy. Calculated gamble. Discard our hand and then draw that many cards in you. Yes. Nam says, when is the best time to tackle the Burning Elite? I think the best time to do it is, quite frankly, Act 1, if you can. If it shows up too, too early in Act 1, it's not really possible, but... Um, it's easiest to handle, generally speaking, in Act 1, because the buffs are the smallest and the enemies are comparatively less deadly. However, the pathing of Act 1 doesn't always work out to allow this easily. So sometimes you have to wait until Act 2, or better yet, Act 3. I tend to think the worst time to do it is in Act... Oof, Act Yikes. I think the worst time to do it is usually in Act 2, is the Act 2 elites are... Super deadly with buffs in, in particular. I think I'm just going to play the accuracy, keep the blade dance still. It's a really crap turn overall. Son of a gun. Bummer. Neko, please. Still no potions, but we get a third blade dance, which I'll take. All right, now we would probably want to upgrade accuracy. And I think we're also done adding blade dances to this deck. But I will take one more combat. Snake plant. Spooky. Spooky, spooky snake plant. Hmm. This actually might be where I need to use the fear potion. Because we realistically need this thing to be dead next turn, and we're taking quite a bit of damage. to gain potions, though. Yeah. I know. Don't even do that much damage. Hmm. Doing ten. Behold, clean kill thanks to the potion. So we get to keep health instead. Still no potion drop. Terrifying. Don't think we want any of these. All right, um, potion lady event. I'll take the money, uh, the relic. What do you got? Question card. Future card rewards give us one additional option to choose from. It's unfortunately not that helpful. Let's upgrade this accuracy. One more try, Juzu. What do you got? Long line of hooded figures. Money's pretty useful with the courier. Ritual dagger could be interesting here, actually. Permanently boosting when it kills a foe, but we won't get that many chances to level it up. I think I'll just take the money. All right, we could avoid this first elite, try to buy potions at the shop. I think I'm just going to rest to shore up our health going into the first elite. 
And between the gambling chip, the Guria, and all of the damage output we have, we'll have to hope that we can kill this first elite without too much of a disaster occurring to us. It's also hopefully a relic from this chest going to help us out a bit. More health. I'll take that. Okay, that should be enough to survive, whatever this is. Three Schlavermans. You got it. Please allow me to kill one of them on turn one. I don't think that did it. Not quite, right? 13, 13, 13, 12. Let's do some math. 9 plus 12. 51 damage. But that does mean we could kill the blue one. Take only 14 life loss here. Which I believe is what we should do. Blade Dance Plus will perfectly kill the red slaver as soon as we draw it. As it does 13 times 4. So the rare case of kill the blue one first, just because the hit point difference mattered. Playing this defend or not makes no difference one way or the other. Blade Dance Strike Strike will at least kill him. This could have been a little bit cleaner, but oh well. That's why we rested, so that it wasn't too scary without potions. Got a bottled lightning allowing us to choose a skill to have in the opening hand. Tempting to pick calculated gamble, but also tempting to pick blade dance plus. We're also offered a second accuracy, a backstab and a piercing whale. I think I'm going to take a second accuracy, quite frankly, just all in on the damage. Whale here helps us out defense-wise, although notably it's not going to do anything against our boss. We still have yet to find a potion, so we're at apparently 90% potion chance. Which means we're likely to find several potions in the next few fights. I mean, we're guaranteed to find at least one, right? <laughs> Gosh, what a run. I think I like Bottled Gamble. Bailey says, if I don't find a potion this fight, it will gift five subs. 10% chance. Good luck to you. Actually, we could perfectly kill this one. Seventeen damage shoes. Oh, there's a fight that went well. A car. But show me the terror. Alchemize. We got a potion. Not a great potion. But we also got a way to make our own potions, so that we don't care if they're dropped after combat. Alchemize says, generate a random potion. You better believe I'm going to do that. <laughs> Pellets is here. Actually, I really like the boat thingy. Can't afford boat thingy and Carter move, huh? I also like buying a fear potion for this elite that I'm about to fight. Can't afford pellets card removal, that's true. Orange Belt says if we play a power attack and skill in the same turn, we'll remove all debuffs. Now, currently we don't have any debuffs to remove, but that could matter for uh, the heart fight much later, which is going to be quite relevant. Could help us against time eater too. And I'm likely to, it could also make Wraith Form a really easy answer for us. We're more likely to get Wraith Form thanks to Question Card as well.
we're likely to generate flexor speed potions thanks to the potion belt. Yeah, Anchor can help us keep buffer turn one against heart. That is pretty relevant later on. Might just be boat thingy and fear potion. I'm actually pretty okay with that. Although, keep continuing to have five strikes in defense seems pretty abysmal. Do sale items restock? The the item itself will restock, but the sale will not be there. So if we buy the footwork, there's another power behind it, but it won't be on sale. Fun fact, with couriers, um, many, many chatters may not know this, but the layout of the top cards in the shop is always the same. Two attacks from your character, two skills from your character, and one power from your character. And if you purchase any of these cards because of Courier, a new card will be up created and it'll be of the same type. So buying Quick Slash or Dagger Throw creates a new random attack card underneath. Buying a skill makes a new random skill. Buying the footwork always replaces it with a new power. Forty-three health. Yeah, pellets remove has got such value long term. I think we're going to do that. There's another boat thingy. The captain's boat thingy. Do I remove strikes? I have three strength. I think I still do. Greetings, book. I'll gamble these. To get these anchors in play early. Let's play the tools and gibble. We gotta play Blade Dance over Defend here. Next turn is. pretty. pretty inevitable. Hmm. We go alchemize accuracy defend and we barely hang on next turn. If I take 16. I only need one block to live next turn. We just need to barely live this. Okay, we're in a bit of a pickle here. Definitely in a bit of a pickle. Okay, we got neutralized, so we're fine. Got to win next turn, though. Oh, so close. Oh, explosive potion saves me. I'll use it. Glad I used the poison potion last turn. There's that flex potion chat warned me about. Gain five strength at the end of your turn. Lose five strength. One blade dance for the road. Yeah, four seems like the right number. We're going to stop there, though. We're going to stop there. Attack. No debuffs for me. Piercing whale that says plus on it. It's also a dodger roll upgraded. Don't have any dexterity though, so yeah. We take in footwork, this would be a lot better. Take the piercing whale. See, is 15 health going to be enough for Bronze Automaton? It might not be.
I don't think it is going to be enough. Uh, we definitely are, don't get to keep buffer for Hyper Beam. We're going to be completely unable to block during the early stages of the fight. Our goal in this fight, play our accuracies and kill the Bronze Automaton before it can Hyper Beam us. So we're going to need to rest here. Mr. Unique Name says, are there any t ever times where you might want to keep a copy of Endless Agony around to keep generating more? Or is it basically always something that gets played when you see it? Usually I play it when I see it. However, I say it's most valuable to, to discard it, not by just choosing not to play it, but instead discarding it for some kind of benefit with either Calculated Gamble or the Gambling Chip. If you discard it with these actions, then you get to draw a bonus card in addition to creating another copy when you draw it again. That can be worth it. But simply choosing not to play it, usually not that good. Think I'll use the Flex Bullets on this boss fight? I think so. Although this is a pretty good turn one draw, actually. Power? I think we should. We need this fight to end quickly. And I can get a lot of new potions. This is a fight where we're not really going to worry about the minions. All of our damage is going to go straight onto Bronze Automaton. We'll kill minions if we need it for blocking. So yeah, here for example, I, I can't keep the buffer through this. And it was never realistic that I would, so... Pretty whatever. Might have our Alchemize stolen, which I will want to... Will want to use. Nope, got Tools of Trade instead. Good. Duplication Potion. I guess play something twice. Ships are 22 apiece. That won't be quite enough to kill next turn. But I can block next turn. Okay. Yeah, I think the rest was indeed the right choice. For this turn right here. Blade Dance alone doesn't kill here. Could have killed with Dupe Pot. This way we get to hold on to the duplication potion. GG. There's that Wraith form we wanted. We'll be taking that. Wraith form buys us a couple turns of intangible. And then costs us one dex per turn, but with the power of the orange pellets, there's no cost at all. We're also offered a Pandora's box, transforming all of our strike and defend cards. Or an Astrolabe, transforming and upgrading three cards. Or a Ring of the Serpent for one draw per turn. No additional energy here. Which means we're going to want to focus on getting some energy upgrades on tools and alchemize in order to stay relevant here. Or hope to find energy generation cards. Yeah, nine transforms, although they'll all be unupgraded. There's a lot of potential for good stuff and zero cost stuff. Or nightmares, that also works. All right, we got After Image, Burst, and Nightmare, as well as another Calculated Gamble. The energy cost of that Nightmare is going to be a bit tricky, but the potential there is truly absurd. But again, my main question is, how do we afford this? I don't know that we do. 
have to go for the Burning Elite here, which means apparently taking a buttload of events. With Juzu Bracelet, that's actually kind of cool. What if I upgraded all cards? Uh, I would be down for that. Yeah, I would be extremely down for that. And we have a Nightmare Alchemize situation. That would also be a lot easier if they were all upgraded. No, healing would be potentially a problem, but 62 health, a fossilized helix, and a gambling chip, I think would be surprisingly good. But first, we have to get through these nerds. That's easier said than done. Well, actually. Lose the piercing well. There's the Nightmare Alchemize. Although, I think I've got my duty to do something else here. So, lower health one is 51. Let's use this. Blade Dance and then Gamble the Blade Dance. Let's see how that's going to help me here. This will be 11 each, so it's not enough to kill either of them. I have a Swift Potion. Plenty of kills in there. Curses! So we'll take 11, unfortunately. That does damper our hopes for an upgrade all, but doesn't remove them. Oh yeah, we could kill with the poison potion, actually. Yeah, let's do that. Still have a kill here with the deadly. Maybe should have done that instead of the swift potion. But like I said, potions will be plentiful. So I'm not 100% worried here. You can already see how badly we're, uh, we're hurting from only having three energy per turn during these fights. It's pretty tough. Come on, Stone Calendar. Surely you can save me. Alright, PK will double the damage of these play dances. That's gonna have to be good. Even with the accuracy, it gets doubled. 34 damage shivs. I'll take it. Boot work no longer does much of anything as we don't have cards that actually generate block other than Survivor. It's the only one. So blocking is a nebulous term for this deck at the moment. Featherfall, thanks for those hundred bits. Day after day, I'm here slaying away and that's what I intend to keep doing, friend. How do Silent block? How do I plan to block the heart? Well, I'm hoping we can just get there to start. Probably going to involve some something involving Wraithform after image. If we can Nightmare the Wraithform successfully, we can probably win that fight. Tempted to take another Piercing Whale, because that's also a pretty useful block utility, but it's pretty difficult to make work with only three energy still. I think we want fewer cards in the deck at this time, not more. Let's skip that. All right, I, th I think upgrade all is actually our best chance here. Oh, purple fire spirits. Donate a card. 
gaining a reward based on what we get. I would not mind losing one of our many rares here to go up to 90 full HP, especially if we could potentially upgrade everything hereafter. Burst is nice, but maybe a little extraneous. Um, I think I'm most happy to part with Burst, actually. Although Bursting Alchemize is pretty sweet. Uh, without an upgrade, it's not that good. Simply removal-wise, I most want Deadly Poison to leave. I think After Image is going to be crucial against Heart, potentially alongside Nightmare. Tools is also crucial because it's free when upgraded. So it's Burst I'm willing to lose here. We'll go to 90 health, and I will, with renewed fervor, seek out Mind Bloom. Accuracy slice, or hey, there's Deadly Poison. Be gone, Deadly Poison. All right, all right, the deck is getting better. Phantasmal Killer was also an option, but again, as a card that's free when upgraded, I've got hopes for it here. These two, huh? These are tricky. I've got good potions, so I'm willing to fight these nerds. What am I duping here? After image? I think we want to keep these agonies and use them right away. Or I could dupe the Blade Dance and maybe outright kill one of them. That's another interesting option. I think in either case, we're going to lose the Survivor. Plan on using our energy on After Image, Blade Dance, Alchemize. I'm going to lose the Gamble too. See what else we get into our hands. Okay, we got an early Wraith form. So I could play it, but is it a good idea? No, I think I want it available for retrieval with the liquid memories. That's what I think I want to do. So, Blade Dance will be what, 28 damage? No, I've got accuracy. We can make it more than that. Uh, accuracy brings it to 44. So I can kill one of them. Yeah, Accuracy Double Blade Dance will be enough, although I need to have enough room in hand. So my play will be Accuracy, Alchemize, Double the Blade Dance, leave After Image Wraith Form unplayed. We kill one of them, buffer the front one's hit. We want to kill the back one to avoid the burn being added. And then if we need to, we can Liquid Memories the Wraith Form. I like that. So this will do 88. Yes. Strength potion I think we'll keep. Six plus twelve. It's only seventy-eight, but with the strength potion, we'll kill. Still got two events coming up. Two good potions. Tough bandages. Whenever we discard a card during our turn. Gain three block. Chat was asking, how do you block against the heart? That might be our answer. Also potentially outmaneuver because literally any source of energy sounds really nice right now. Even if it is unupgraded at the moment. I'm going to take this. Please. Hmm. 
Apotheosis also would have been a good way to get upgrade all. Which makes me want to save my money for the next shop. Although there is a tempting removal offer here. I think what I should do is go here. Is Abacus good enough to take? I don't think so. I think I think because I want to look at the contents of another store, if there wasn't a potential for another store, I'd, I'd be making different decisions here. Maybe buying the second Alchemize even. Um, but right now I think it's most important that we keep our money high so that we can afford something critical here. There's nothing critical here at the moment. If there was another calculated gamble, I'd buy that or uh, something similar, but we don't have that. All right, last question mark for a little bit. Will it be our savior? Nay, it's the Tomb of Lord Red Mask offering us the ability to trade all of our money for a red mask. Hmm. And now a giant head who is very chunky indeed. How worrisome. Tools is three block per turn now, too, which is quite nice. Tools, after image, accuracy. Good. We'll be okay here. I have enough ways to stall this fool. Nightmare the Alchemize. I don't know if that's necessarily wise, but it's what I'm choosing to do. We have Wraith Form for next turn. I think I'd better Liquid Memories the Wraith form. Otherwise, this won't work very well. And then we just play all the Alchemizes. Okay, we'll do that. Pushing other social media platforms, giant head. Get out of here. We got our potions full, although I wouldn't exactly say they're full of good things. Good triumph in the giant head fight, getting a boot thingy for block on turn two, as well as another calculated gamble, which I will click with extreme prejudice here, and our second store. Ah. 
Alas, there is not an apotheosis here, but there is a membership card giving us a 50% discount on all products, which I will happily take. And some other intriguing options. Preserved Insects makes Elites easier to kill. We could remove yet another card, shrink this deck down a bit further. Wouldn't mind losing... Actually, most of the deck is pretty good now. Not a lot of block cards for footwork to work with. I suppose Expertise is pretty difficult to use. We have one stinky block card. I like it though, because it, it's uh, 11 block with the tough bandages. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. All right, we've only got one last chance at upgrading everything. Probably not going to happen this run, but we'll make it. We'll make it try. With three elites left in the run, actually, I see a lot of value to preserved insect. I also see value in holding our money till the final shop, because I do think we're going to at least get that far. That's what I'm going to do. Buy nothing here. Move onwards. All right, last chance. It's Winding Halls. All right, Madness, you're going to have to do. Help. Please help. We did not get the upgrades we were looking for. That's not to say we can't win, though. There's definitely some creative things we could do from here. three currently. That could kill one of them. Prevent a wound. I think I'd rather get tools in play. Or maybe after image in play. Nah, tools in play. But already we can see the utility of madness there, letting me get that nightmare in play for one cost instead of more than one cost. Uh, looks like I might want to play Wraithform this turn. Not if I don't draw it. Understood. Well, in that case, let the murdering begin. These are 13 apiece, so we can kill both of these 25 damage daggers. Easy peasy like. And then some. That's 24, so this is a full block even. Get rid of you as well. 13 here. Even if I let my dexterity go negative, we can restore that negative dexterity by playing a power, attack, and a skill during our turn. It's that simple. that alchemize. These potions are pretty sad. Uh-oh. That's a bit better. Okay, so a flawless Reptomancer fight. That's a decent sign. Happy Flower is going to give us more energy, which is crucial. Could take an Agony here. We wanted another self-duplicating card. I'm not actually convinced that I do. What I want is another important upgrade. Probably want to upgrade one of these calculated gambles to be reusable, although there's so many other good options for upgrade as well. Nightmare Plus, Outmaneuver Plus, Madness Plus. Could take a second unupgraded Outmaneuver. 
I'm really not sufficiently convinced by that. It does need to be upgraded, I think, for it to be worthwhile. All right, let's get the key first. We can upgrade what we get from this fight if it's absolutely necessary. Which it probably won't be. Lots of damage, but no accuracies. Let's go Blade Dance, then gamble all of it. Gonna be pretty difficult to block. I think we'll just let the buffer handle it. Play after image, phantasmal, alchemize, well laid plans. Keep the blade dance with double accuracies. That'll do huge damage next turn. And I can also use a power potion this turn or get rid of the dex potion, which I don't think is that valuable. Let's cycle this. Fire potion. Shivs are 34 apiece. GG, nerd. Bottled Flame, allowing us to put an attack in the opening hand. There's also Reflex and Adrenaline. Man, Reflex with this many calculated gambles is pretty spicy. And with a gambling chip, too. Adrenaline's nice, especially for its assistance with the energy. But Reflex... I think is even better. And I'm going to bottle Endless Agony so that I can discard both copies on turn one. How's that for a bottled interaction? It's pretty cool, actually. All right. I think we need to upgrade at least one of these calculator gambles so that we have a reusable, ridiculous amount of block card. Awaken one is going to gain power with every power we play, so we have to be careful about how many powers we play. Means probably not playing the unupgraded accuracy. I might nightmare wraith form. We'll see. This could be tough. Blocking won't be easy here. No, blocking will not be easy here. Definitely want to play out maneuver. That would let me do the nightmare wraith form thing potentially. I think I should probably play after image. Yeah, after image out maneuver. Yes. Yes. actually does full block, so I'm kind of okay with this, and I, I see a really viable turn next turn. Could Liquid Memories the Calculated Gamble now? That's actually not too bad either. Or I can next turn Dagger Throw, discard one of these, then use the Liquid Memories on the other one and use Liquid Memories to get it back, rather. Either way, I'm using the Memories in this fight, for sure. It's actually draw me seven. Don't have 
to play the Wraith form immediately if I get the gamble back. Hmm. I also lose the Ascender's Bane. And I don't have to draw the Piercing Whale again. I'm, I'm going to go with next turn. Memories. We have the energy to, from Happy Flower to let me play both of these. Don't think just uh, using Nightmare on the zero cost Wraith form will actually make it work the way that I want to. I think that's fine. Now my plan for this fight is going to be to win in 12 turns and a buffer. Although, if some of those turns are just spent playing Wraith Forms, it's going to be tough. So, like I said, I'm, I'm quite sure this won't make the Wraith Forms free. Should be three cost here. Yeah. Certainly want to play those immediately. Hmm. Should probably play one now, but it's really tempting to get out maneuver down. True that the calendar is going to kill the bird, especially if I play the wraith form now. That's funny. Now, if we madness a card and then duplicate that with nightmare, that stays permanently. I think yes, we can probably cycle back through with the gambles, but only probably. Probably. So here we are going to just play all of the powers now. I'm also going to make this Phantasmal free. Or wait, I can't do that if I want to. Yeah. It's not quite what I thought it was going to do. Time's ticking away. That Wraith Form to be free as well. Alright, you need to die, it looks like. Use the gamble we want to kill next turn rather than blocking. Um, 
I still a buffer? I do. Okay, so this is safe. Nice. We got a ghost in a jar. This run might actually have what it takes, chat. This is a single hit always, so we can just use our buffer. If we don't draw the wraith form, we do draw the wraith form. I could still even choose not to use it. Also, is our opponent is dead, apparently. Uh, I would, however, like to not kill them this turn so that I can have Happy Flower on two for the next fight. All right, Awaken one, not a problem at all, actually. That was fairly encouraging. Our next boss, Donu and Dekka, no time eater for us, although arguably this fight could be just as difficult. As we're not able to get all that much done per turn, usually. Plans. Accuracy. Madness? Yeah. Good work. Please hold on to that card. Then Nightmare it, then win. Hmm. Alright, instead I shall do something resembling this. Extra energy next turn, and I'm retaining. So keep the nightmare. Play the madness? Let's do it. Madness PK. You got it. Keep this. Yeah, this is the fl this is the run that almost died to Jellworm. That's this is the one. Hmm. Duplicate the gamble? Seems like that might be necessary. This is not a great turn. Really good. Dang it. Take 15. I'm okay with that. Decisive next turn. Go. Power, power, skill. Many attacks. And yeah, I'll play dance again here. Upgrading well laid plans might be a helpful thing to do as well. So many good upgrades we have. Although we should also not kill on this turn. Because again, we want to set up Happy Flower to a higher number for the upcoming Elite fight. So let us hold off on that lethal for a moment. GG. 
Too thump, too thump, too thump. A deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of never giving up? Even when things look grim on your silent run. Prepare your knives, dealing 21 at 60 damage. Pass the heck out. All right, we're missing eight hit points. I think, quite frankly, an upgrade will be more valuable than that. Upgrading Madness or another Gamble or the Outmaneuver or Nightmare or something. Gotta be something. Or Well-Aid Plans. Maybe upgrade Well-Aid Plans. Let's upgrade Well-Aid Plans. But yeah, many, many upgrades. The Alchemize upgrade, the Tools of the Trade upgrade. Really hoping we see an Apotheosis in the shop. If not, we still have many ways to win, as those previous fights showed. And there could be some kind of energy adjustment here as well. There's also just a Lizard Tail. Oh, and a Ghost in a Jar. Oh my. Hello. Well now, these seem like pretty good things. Second copy of Ghost in a Jar with a potion belt it definitely lets us do some hot nonsense here. I'm seeing a pretty easy way to beat the heart if we dupe pot wraith form and slash or double after image. We can really easily block for quite a while in that fight. Try to find an apotheosis behind the purity. That's a fun idea. I think I'd rather just uh, invest in what we've got here. I think we'll go speed uh, duplication potion, double ghost in a jar, power potion into the heart. We can also buy removal, maybe sling of courage. Wouldn't mind removing this slice. Actually, wouldn't mind removing... Hmm. Or expertise, maybe. Let's start with this. What's behind the ghost? Swift potion. So I can buy a removal or a relic. The sling of courage relic would help us get to the heart with more health. And I think that's all we need is health for the heart. Deck is only survivor for block, only survivor and the tough bandages generating 10 and a half per turn and the after image one per card. And if we're intangible, that's all we're going to need is one per card since speed of death is also reduced by intangible. Let's just take the sling here. No paper crane, no problem. Paper crane doesn't reduce damage if you're already intangible. Cool. I I'm I'm pretty hopeful here that what we have is going to work just fine. Five points of strength for this fight. Let's go. I'm going to discard the up maneuver because we're not going to have that many cards next turn anyway. Probably want to try to kill the shield first. Actually, let's gamble even more cards. Not doing enough per hit here. Current potions are fine. Worst case scenario, I just use a Ghost in a Jar on this turn. That does seem to be what's about to happen. Completely okay with that. Do Pot Piercing Well doesn't do much. Power Potion doesn't do a whole lot. I'd rather use the Power Potion in the Heart Fight anyway. And I want to use at least one potion this fight, because I do have an Alchemize. So yeah, let's just play the Ghost in a Jar. No biggie here. Do I dupe something like Piercing Whale? Do I hold on to the Nightmare? Yeah, classic Phantasmal Killer turn, indeed. I'm just going to destroy this. Uh, if I don't draw... Wraith form next turn, we still have buffer. Yeah, we're fine.
In fact, we can just deliberately use the buffer here. Go well aid plans, accuracy, tools. Dying first. Sure. Let's try to get a better potion. With uh, orange pellets, ancient potion doesn't seem that good. Either just poison potion. Stone calendar is saving me, so let's just use the remaining two potions. Sneko oil. Could be good, but that could also be really bad. So let's discard it. Go one more random. Another power potion. That's perfect. Get him, Stone Calendar. All right, we saved not only all of our health, but we have more than all of our health. 96 health going into the heart. And there's the outmaneuver plus that we wanted. Acrobo also pretty good, but more energy? Yes, please. All right. Two power potions, a dupe pot, and a ghost in jar going into the corrupt heart fight. Surely this has to be enough. Show me a 10 card turn one. Stone Calendar goes before burns. Great question, Featherfall TT. Generally speaking, if you've ever got a question about what order do things happen at the end of a turn, your best bet is to look at top to bottom the screen. So, relics go first, followed by any powers or status effects on your character, and lastly, any cards in hand. Top, middle, bottom is the order of operations. So, relics and powers and frost orbs all occur before burns do. All right, we have Nightmare Wraith form in our hand. That's pretty cool. I think I want to look at the contents of the power potion first. Yeah, I could also Nightmare the Gamble Plus, right? Hmm. First, I want to make a room in hand. Let's see what this is. But work Thousand Cuts. Caltrops is really helpful damage. Thousand Cuts, probably less damage than Caltrops. Uh, footwork seems completely irrelevant. So I'll take a Trops here. Is there any way that I can use Dagger Throw to make either the Nightmare or the Wraith form free with the Madness. I might be able to do that. Could also dupe pot the Nightmare on the Wraith form, create six Wraith forms. That seems kind of excessive. Dr. Spaj, thanks for 42 months of support. They won't be zero cost, is the thing. Also, get a free one now. That one also won't be free if duplicated. Dupe the Madness. 
Wait, you're right. Can I do that? I think I can do that. Yeah, I can. Okay, discard the piercing whale. Oh my god, chat member, chat member who says dupe madness. I can't believe that's actually the play here. Check this out. Discard the piercing whale. Play the tools of the trade. I have one energy, one madness, two three cost cards. The madness can only target cards that don't cost zero. Dupe the madness. Nightmare's free, Wraith Form's permanently free. Let's make multiple copies of free Wraith Form. Just because we can. And I guess I might as well play this right now, too. Glorious. Well, that's going to be pretty advantageous. Let's just say. Don't mind me just playing all of my powers. Losing three decks per turn. Dexterity, who needs it anyway, right? Uh-oh. My buffer. Not my buffer. We're intangible for ten turns. Maybe eleven if we need it to be. I don't actually think we need the outlet over... Well, we have expertise coming up, though. Let's do it. Yeah. Thanks, Fossilized Helix, for saving me one hit point. Keep this Blade Dance Plus for next turn. It's already capped here. Oh, yeah, and I still have one Madness, because reasons. Uh, let's discard this for the moment. Madness is going to hit the Blade Dance Plus. I actually quite like that. Keep discarding those. Didn't play Phantasmal again, okay. Get him, Happy Flower. Get in there, Stone Calendar. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.